Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about Ceph Admin and I'm going to install it and I'm going to go through the process of installing Ceph Admin and talking about what you need to do that is the least amount of Ceph Admin in the console as possible. So I'm going to use the GUI as much as possible and I'm trying to install it on a Debian machine that is just clean, nothing extra installed on it. I'm excited to tell you that I partnered up with Cold Combat to bring your kid a learning opportunity. Back in my day, there was no one that could tutor me, I knew more than the teachers, and I had to put in the work because there was no other option. Unlock your child's coding potential with Code Combat's live online classes. The classes are led by experts who make learning an exciting and rewarding experience. With their help, your child will work through coding challenges and feel proud of their accomplishments. Personal attention and a structured curriculum will help your child become a confident coder. I always said that I hope that you learned something today and now your kid can. Follow the link in the description and enter the promo code EXPLORER10 at checkout for a 10% discount and all subscriptions have a 30 day money back guarantee. So, let's switch over to my screen here. So these are three Debian hosts. I have a Ceph Admin 1, 2 and 3. And first off, I actually need to go into the sudo file. So sudo vsudo. So this is a configuration file for sudo and in here I want to go down uh, to sometime where at the bottom where the sudo group has full access to do sudo but you need still to enter a password. But in this case I actually want to say that this current user that is logged in could do anything with sudo without using a password. And the reason that I want to do that is because I want to use this user as a deployment agent for Ceph Admin. Uh, usually Ceph Admin is using root, but in a Debian system you can't log in with Y using root if you don't reconfigure the daemon. Uh, so this is another way to get around that problem. Um, still having some users that can do root without passwords aren't that perfect of a solution. But if you want something to be automatic, then you need to do some... Um, yeah, you need to have the possibility. I'm so bad at using uh, nano. <laughs> Not really used to these controls at all. I'm a Vim user. So let's do the third and last one here. Uh, so this goes pretty fast. And then after that, everything we do, we don't need to enter any passwords for sudo, which is making things easier as well, of course. So now we go into host one again. And here I first want to start with installing curl because we're going to use curl in order to download Ceph admin from the site. So that then we take curl and we do a silent remote name location and this specific URL here. So github ceph ceph raw quincy source ceph admin ceph admin. And then we will get an executable downloaded. Then we can uh, uh, change mod that to add the executable flag and then we can run it. So now we'll do sudo ceph admin add the repository of release quincy. So we will set our release to quincy, that is what we want to install. And next is installing this. So this is installing the specific uh, setup on this host. And we need to do that on all our hosts. So let's go into admin2 and do the same thing there. If we don't do that then the agent or the running agent do doesn't have all the packages required in order to run the daemon and doing the update on the different hosts. So um, admin 3 and we do the same here. So now we prepare all these hosts and we're waiting for the first Ceph admin host to be installed. Now that the Ceph admin packages are installed, we need to bootstrap the first host. And here we have some extra flags. 
So first off we do Ceph Admin, Bootstrap, and see here that we don't use the locally installed Ceph Admin, we're using the system installed uh, Ceph Admin. We will bootstrap this system, we set the monitor IP for this specific host that we are running on at the moment. We uh, want to log to a file, so everything that is running in the different daemons and so on, we want that to be written to a file on the local system. And we also want the SSH user set to wooden so we can actually log into other machines and doing updates using that user. And the log to file here is also required for Luke and uh, Promptail later on when we want to gather our logs. So uh, let's run that. And it will bootstrap this system here. We can see that the other two systems are ready to go. So now it's just a matter of waiting for this to install. Now that that is done, we can see what it actually did here. So it set up a monitor, one monitor with this uh, network address here. It set up a public network and it also uh, it created keys for the mon map and so on. Everything that I usually do when I do a manual install, it created a monitor and started that monitor. Uh, next up, it would uh, create a manager and start that up. And then it will start a bunch of services here. So the mon monitor manager, crash service, the Ceph exporter, which exports information to Prometheus from Ceph. Then we have Prometheus, Grafana, node exporter, which exports the information from the local system to Prometheus, alert manager, so we can get all the alerts. And then we have the da uh, dashboard module that is starting up here as well. It creates a self-signed certificate. And uh, creating an admin user, and here, down here we see the login details. So what we want to do is copy this password here, and then paste and login. So now I can set a different password. Let's do a very simple one. Uh, but it can't be too simple, so just QWERTY would not work. So QWERTY123 works just fine here, I guess. So let's do it. Thirty one to three. And no. Nope. There we go. So now I have the system up and running. And what I want to do more here is a couple of things before we actually uh, continue here. So back to the console. And I want to install the command line tools. So Ceph common. Uh, because those packages are very useful for some things that you can't do in the GUI anymore, uh, GUI yet, which is a little bit sad. I would like to have all the features in the GUI at this point, so you could create everything that you need. Um, but they are slowly but surely adding more features to the uh, console, uh, the graphical interface. So. Uh, after this has installed, I want to copy the keys over. So we have this public key uh, in our system here in Ceph, Ceph Pub. I want to copy that as an SSH key over to both my uh, other hosts. And the reason I do that is so we can use those keys later on in order to remotely manage those hosts. So we copy the keys over, then the uh, Ceph daemon can log into the host and deploy things as root directly. Uh, so now we have set up everything that we need in the um, console. So now we can go into the dashboard here. Now I want to expand my cluster. So let's see if we can uh, do a little bit of a zoom here so we see better. So we expand our cluster. We see that we have one Ceph admin host here. Maybe we do a little bit less. Uh, I want to add more hosts. So first off we do Ceph admin host 2 and here we do uh, not 41, 44 is the next one and we don't add any labels to this one. If I add that host it gets no scheduled label and I don't really want to have no schedule. I would like to have a schedule on these. Uh, but we can do that first. 
And then we can add another one, self admin three, and let's do 45, which is the next one. So now we have added two new hosts and we see here that it actually is starting up and getting some information about this host. If I edit this host and remove this no scheduled and do the same for the other one, it actually get default schedule and add all the different uh, services that is required for a normal Ceph installation. And there is some rules already set up that a normal installation should have at least two managers, three monitors. Uh, you should install Ceph exporter and Ceph node exporter, uh, node exporter on all different hosts. So that, and also the crash uh, uh, analytics as, uh, as well, of course. So the other host will has, have those services installed as well in a timely manner. Uh, but we don't really need to look at this. It will do it. So we will go to the next one here. And the hard part here is that we now want to add more OSDs. And this has failed for me it's a couple of times. And it is uh, something that you can rectify in the system, but it's a little bit annoying that it doesn't work every time. So here I can go in and add uh, more uh, drives. And currently I only see two of the hosts. So if we back up here, we see that we are getting the third host installed here. So maybe that is a requirement for actually having them in this list. Yeah. So now we have a list here. We see that we have one extra drive here, SSD, SDB, uh, which is about 10 gigabytes. Uh, so here you could either say that you want a type of a hard drive, a vendor, a model or a size. So I think this way of sh um, choosing drives is a little bit strange, but okay, I want to create a bunch of new OSDs using size, for instance, I say 9.8 or yeah, a 9.8 gigabytes. So then it, I will have selected all of them. And if I add that, you see that we will create three new OSDs on these hosts. Um, if I continue to the next one here, we can see that now we need to figure out which services should be available. And we see that node export, Ceph exporter should be everywhere. Node exporter should be everywhere. We should have one alert manager, one Grafana and one Prometheus. And the Ceph admin interface doesn't really care where it puts things. It will uh, move things around when, it, when necessary. And you don't really have any say in that. Uh, but uh, we want some more functionality here. So let's create more things. We can go in here and say that we want a Loki instance. I want one of those and place it wherever. So we create that service. I also want to create Promtail services. And I want to have don't have, want to have a specific amount of them. I want to, all of them to have. So it should be a star count on that. And I also want to go in here and say that I want to have MDSs. And in this case, I want to have three MDSs. So I can have one per host. And in, in this case, uh, you could have two, of course, because in the case you want to create the file system, you need at least two per file system, but I want to have some extra redundancy here. So I set three. And in this case, you know, you need to give them an ID. So I give them an ID of CephFS. So now we have created a schedule here, a schema of what kind of services we want. And can go to next one. We can review here and here we see that it actually is installing more and more services here. So it actually follows the setup that we want. And in this case, when you press expand cluster here, it doesn't really do anything more. It just goes back and we see that most of the things that we have uh, requested is already installed. If we look at services, we can see our configuration. If we look at the host, we can see what is actually installed here. 
if we look at OSDs, we now see that we didn't get any OSDs, or at least they haven't been installed yet. So everything should be installed now as the services, but we don't have any OSDs yet. So let's try this again and see if we can get this up and running. Um, so let's do size again, and we do like that. And we will preview that. So this is the setup that we want. Let's create that and see if we get any OSDs installed. Now I've waited a while for this and they haven't shown up. And if we, if we go into services here, we see that we actually have um, two of them already here. And let's see. Oh, this is strange, this GUI. Okay, so it said that was on page two. Okay, so there we go. Now we see that we have two of these OSD services here but they haven't deployed any OSDs. But you can actually go in here and delete those uh, services because there is something uh, that hangs up here and doesn't do the actual work. So if we go in here and delete both of these and then create a new service, then maybe that will trigger this installation procedure. It should go pretty fast to in, in create new OSDs, but for some reason, at some point, this is just failing. Um, so if we add them again, we preview and create. So they, they should pop up pretty fast, uh, as I don't really have much of a latency here in the system. Yeah, so let's continue here and look at logs. So if we go to the var log Ceph and the actual uh, FSID of our system, we can see logs here. So what I wanted to see if I got any logs about this uh, specific service, and it doesn't seem that it's running here, um, which is a little bit sad. Uh, let's see if we can find it on any on the, uh, of the other hosts here. Uh, no, so we don't have any logs for this. So, if we look here at logs, audit logs, doesn't really show up anything here. Go back to services again. Yeah, let's do another delete then. So the lack of information when things doesn't work is a little bit annoying. Um, so let's try this again. Let's choose a vendor this time. Let's do vendor ATA and add. Let's see if that works better. And preview create. Let's see if it works this time. That seemed to work. So now it's creating OSDs for us. It has set up one per host, I guess. And it, it, they are currently down. So they are creating locally on the host. And when they have done that, it will be become up. So let's just wait for that. Now we can see the size here and everything seems to be up and running, more or less. It has created a, uh, a placement group on each of these. And if we look here, we see that we have two objects, one placement group, and raw capacity of about 30 gigabytes. Three OSDs are up and running. What I want to do now is create a file system. So if we go in here and say create, and then we can create Ceph data, replicated, three replicas, applications, CephFS. So that's the first pool. Let's create that. And then I will create the other pool, which is the Ceph metadata, of course, replicated, and CephFS. And then create that pool. What I wanted 
want now, when these pools are set up and up and running, I would like to create a file system, of course. And it takes a little while for these to get up and running and then they will get 32 active uh, placement groups instead. So I want, will wait for them to actually settle and have the right amount of placement groups. But if I go into file system here, we have no features at all, pretty much when it comes to creating or so on, which is a little bit sad. So what I need to do now is go back to the console and do the creation of the file system. So this is a required step, step uh, and I need to do that on the first host, of course, because I only installed the tooling on the first host. So now it will create a file system or with metadata pool three and data pool da uh, pool two. So CephFS with the metadata and data. And if we go back here, we see that we have a, a file system up and running, it's active. If we go back to the dashboard, we can see that we have metadata services, one active, two standby. So a lot of this setup can be done already in the GUI. We need to install the tooling on all the hosts that we want to add to our cluster. It's pretty easy to expand and add more hosts to a cluster. So if I wanted a fourth host, for instance, I just go in here and say add and add an extra uh, host and then set up which kind of services that host needs to run. Um, and as we have already set it up, if I would create a new host, these different things that are here are already met. It might create more monitors, up to five of them. I don't think that is a really good use case here, but yeah, okay. But it will create uh, more uh, more SF exporters, more crash exporters. It will create a no more um, node exporter here. And if it finds any drives that are o using a ATA, it will install those as well as more OSDs. And it will install a prompt tail on that host as well. So that is interesting. Uh, what we want to do now is look at Loki and uh, prompt tail, of course. So if we go in here and look at the daemon logs, we see that we can't see these. Now, one of the reasons is because we are using the uh, SSH engine and we don't really have a valid um, certificate at the moment. So if I open this, it's in, in a new tab. We see also that it's using this ad, uh, in admin URL and I haven't set that up in my host file. So there is a bunch of different issues here. So first off, we can go into the uh, configuration here and uh, now the uh, manager modules and dashboard and then do an edit. So here we have that URL and I want to change stuff those up to use uh, my IPs instead because I'm not haven't uh, configured these on the host so an IP address would be more safe to use on all these at the moment but in your system you probably have a DNS set up and everything so that would be just safe for you to run it like that uh, but if we go back to our logs again here we still do don't see these we don't see them in this performance either. But now I got the IP, so it actually reloaded the configuration. It took a while. Uh, but if we go to this uh, tab here, we of course need to accept this um, certificate. So if I accept that, we get all the stats, go back here and reload this, we'll get all the stats as well. But if I go on the logs here, we see that we don't get this interface. And as I mentioned in my prompt tail Loki video, this is because we aren't logged in. And if I look at the guide on Seth's uh, homepage, it says just log in and you should be fine. And uh, so if we go to sign in here, the default username and password is admin admin, but it doesn't allow it. So this is a little bit annoying. Um, now we need to go back to the um, console again and we need to find a specific file. 
So in our system, we have uh, var lib self, and in here we under the fsid we have a bunch of directories. Here we need to go into the Grafana Ceph admin directory and in here into the etc directory and Grafana again. And here we have the Grafana in. This is on in the slash etc directory when you have it installed in uh, locally. But when you are running with services, it has this a little bit longer path. And if we edit these files, we see here that it has a bunch of configuration. One thing we could do that we could go in and say that anonymous login could be just editor and then we would have a system that works well without being logged in. If we want to keep being logged in, then we need to allow admin creation. So don't disable that. And if we go back again to our GUI here, um, I don't think we can actually just log in. I think we need to restart Grafana. Yeah, so let's go into the services. Uh, Grafana, choose the Grafana service and restart. So now it will restart and read that configuration. Go back to logs. We can go in to the sign in, admin, admin. And now it tells me, please create a new password. So let's try with QWERTY123, QWERTY123. So now I'm logged into the Grafana dashboard. If I reload, I get into the Loki uh, log browser, can do the log browsing here. Choose all the cluster logs and show logs and go live. And here we have a live update on all the logs that is handling, happening in our system. We didn't do any extra configuration in order to say that this prompt tail should talk to this Graf uh, Grafana or Prometheus system. It just works and everything is just set up for us. And we could follow our system pretty well here. Uh, I, I think that the uh, Ceph admin interface has come a long way. There are still a bunch of rough edges that needs to be ironed out and you need to figure out uh, how to set up all these things and give you good responses when things doesn't work. So you don't know, so you know why doesn't it deploy new OSDs and so on. So more error handling and so on is needed in order to get a smooth operation for all system administrators. But I think it's come, uh, come a long way and it is more useful now. This is what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you liked this video. If you have any comments or suggestions, what do you think about the Ceph admin interface? Please leave a comment in the comment section down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.